Welcome to Electron Line. Here's another one of those typical examples for a max min problem. We are to construct a cylinder that has an open top, that has a given volume of one cubic meter, and we're supposed to use the least amount of material. How do we do that? Well, first of all, we start with drawing a diagram, and I've already done so. So here we have a cylinder. We have a bottom, but we don't have a top to the cylinder. So we only need materials for the side and the bottom. The next step is we're trying to find out what's being maximized or minimized. So in this case, they tell us the least amount of material, so the amount of material is being minimized. But how do we represent that mathematically? Well, the least amount of material really means the least amount of surface area of the size that exists. So we have the side and the bottom, so the least amount of surface area. So in this case, we can say, we can say that surface area is being minimized. So now we need an equation to equate the surface area. That means that the area will be equal to the area of the bottom, which would be pi r squared, plus the area of the side. Now, the side is basically like a rectangle. The length would be the circumference, and the width would be the height. So in this case, we go plus 2 pi r times h. So this is the area of the bottom, and the area of the side, and that's being minimized. That's why we need the equation for that. Notice we have two variables, r and h, and they're both unknown. So the fourth step is we need to come up with some sort of constraint that allows us to relate r and h to one another. And the constraint is that the volume must be one cubic meter. So step four, the constraint tells us that the volume equals 1, and of course the equation of the volume of a cylinder is equal to the area of the base times the height. And of course we know that since the volume is 1, 1 equals pi r square h. So there's the constraint. Now what does the constraint allow us to do? It allows us to eliminate one of the variables in the equation. So step 5, we're going to solve this for one of the variables, let's say h. h is equal to 1 divided by pi r squared, and substitute that back into our equation right here. That tells us now that the area is equal to pi r squared plus 2 pi r times, and h can be written as 1 over pi r squared. That means this pi is eliminated, and this r eliminated with one of those r's which means now that the area is equal to pi r squared plus 2r to the minus 1 power. Now we're ready to go to the next step, which is take the derivative of that and set it equal to 0. So step 6, we take a prime is equal to 2 pi r, and here when we bring the exponent down, that would be minus 2r to the negative 2 power which of course can be written as 2 pi r minus 2 over r squared. And then we're going to set, oops, set a prime equal to 0. When we do that, we can then solve for the only unknown that's left, which is r. And we'll do that over here. Step 7, we have 0 is equal to 2 pi r minus 2 over r squared, and we have to solve that for r, so we can go ahead and bring this to one side, so we have a 2 pi r is equal to 2 divided by r squared, or, and here we can see that the 2's cancel out, r cubed equals 1 over pi, or r is equal to 1 over the cube root of pi. That's kind of a strange number, but hey, that's probably right. So once we've determined one of the two variables, now we need to also determine the other variable, the other unknown, which is h. And h is defined as 1 over pi r squared. So we plug in what r is equal to. And so we have h is equal to 1 divided by pi times the quantity 1 over pi to the 1 third power, and we need to square that. So h is equal to 1 divided by pi 
times 1 over pi to the 2 thirds power, which can be written as a to is equal to pi to the 2 thirds power divided by pi, which is 1 over pi to the 1 third power. And so it looks like h has the exact same value as r. Final check to see if we have this correct. We know that the volume should add up to 1, and the volume is equal to pi r squared h, which is equal to pi r is 1 over pi to the 1 third power, and we have to square that, times h which is 1 over pi to the 1 third power. You can see here that 1 over pi to the 1 third squared is 1 over pi to the 2 thirds, times 1 over pi to the 1 third, which is 1 over pi. So we end up with pi times 1 over pi, or we can see that volume is indeed equal to 1, which is one of the initial constraints that we got. So you see, the answer is actually correct. Again, we follow the steps, draw a diagram, determine what's being maximized or minimized. In this case, the material is being minimized, which means the surface area is being minimized. We write an equation in terms of the surface area, in terms of one of the, oh, well, in this case, both variables. We then find the constraint, which allows us to solve for one of the variables in terms of the other, which allows us to eliminate one of the two variables. We now have an equation for the area, which we're trying to minimize with just one variable. We take the derivative, we set the derivative equal to zero, and then we solve for the unknown variable. Once we have the unknown variable, we plug it into our constraint to find the other unknown variable, and then we check to make sure we did it correctly. And that's how it's done.